parity is a very powerful tool in mathematics and in this particular video we will learn about it and one application of it so let's directly dive into the problem suppose you have written the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 on the board and in each of these gaps you want to plug in the signs plus or minus so you have two symbols plus and minus and you are allowed to throw in these symbols wherever you want so maybe you can put a plus first and then another plus then a minus then a plus and then two minuses then one plus maybe after that two minuses and so on you have complete freedom so you have complete freedom to do this you can do this in whatever way you want the question is after you have done that is the final sum the whatever you get after computing this is the final sum can can you make it ever zero so can this be zero that's the question okay and uh, for example in this particular case this is 1 plus 2 that's 3 plus 3 6 minus 4 that's 2 plus 7 that's uh, 7 uh, plus 5 that's 7 minus 6 1 minus 7 negative 6 plus 8 plus positive 2 minus 9 that's uh, negative 7 minus 10 negative 17 so for in this particular case this is negative 17 after you have computed the value of this thing it becomes negative 17 the question is can this ever become 0 because there are several ways of putting these plus and minuses in between and maybe at some point this becomes 0 now there is a very uh, beautiful way of doing this problem and it uses the notion of parity. Uh, parity can be defined in a broader sense but for this particular video let's understand it in a very simple manner. We think of it as odd or even. So any number is either odd or even but it cannot be both. And 0 is even. Can you ever uh, what, can you ever think about this question? Why is 0 even? Can you give an argument for that? A link in the description will take you to the main page of this particular discussion which has this and several other problems which you can try. Uh, so please click on the link and uh, try those things to master this idea okay so zero is even and you have to think why and somehow we have to use that fact to uh, solve this problem now let's see how suppose you have put a negative sign somewhere in this particular thing you put we have put a negative sign so uh, this is negative 4. Now you want to convert this negative sign into a positive sign. So convert negative x to positive x. So in this case x is 4 so you convert negative 4 to positive 4. Now you want to know what happens to the sum. What happens to the sum. So let's see what happens to the sum. So you have 1 plus 2 blah 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 and then you have negative x and then you have a bunch of other numbers then you have 10. You can, So the sum is initially let's say the number is sum. In this case it was negative 17 for our example but it could be some other number. So suppose the number is sum or maybe I can just use a letter let's use the letter y suppose the sum is the letter y okay 
I will convert this negative x into positive x. Notice what happened. We just added 2x to the sum. Why? The only way you can do this is if you add positive 8 to this value of negative 4, the output becomes positive 4. So converting this negative sign into this positive sign, that means you are actually adding 8 to the sum of these numbers to the value of y. So every time you convert a negative sign into a positive sign, you are actually adding double of that number to the initial sum value. So you have y plus 2x and maybe you have another number here which was negative z. So you convert this negative sign into positive sign. So in effect you are actually adding 2z. You are actually adding 2z. So every time you are adding double the number if you are converting a negative sign into a positive sign. Right? Okay, so now we are into the crux of the problem. Imagine that you have, suppose, suppose you have converted all negatives to positives. Suppose you have done that. So now what do you have? You have 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 10. This particular, this is the this is the final situation. You have converted all the negatives to positive, and what is the value of this? So you can actually find the value of this. So that is fifty-five, the sum of these numbers, and you can check that uh, this operation that we did here at every step you added something even to the initial sum. So the initial sum, then you add some even number 2x and some even another even number 2z. So to the initial sum, you every time you added some or other even number. Okay, so we are in the last step of the problem that the initial sum and you added a bunch of even numbers, even 1, even 2, and so on. And you got this final thing, which is 55. There is a formula, n into n plus 1 by 2. So you can use that to find this value. Anyway, so this is odd. 55 is odd. You have added a bunch of even numbers, so you are their sum, this particular sum will also be even. The question was, can the initial sum be zero? Can this be zero? So if it is zero, then we have zero plus even equals to odd, and we reach a contradiction. Because zero is even, and to that if you add something even, their sum will also be even, so that cannot be equal to some odd number. And that solves the problem. You see how cleverly the notion of parity is being used in this particular problem. We can use parity in a much more broader sense in mathematics, in math olympiad style problems, and in uh, more uh, powerful group theoretic situations. Uh, keep on watching great videos. The link in the description will take you to more beautiful problems.